hello everyone in this lecture we are going to discuss function overloading suppose we want to make three functions that add two values three values and four values respectively so i have created three functions that is adding two values three values and four values and given them a name sum functions with same name in a single program in c language is not allowed it will confuse compiler to call the functions which function to call that will not be decided but in c++ functions with same name in a program is allowed using function overloading concept because though they are having same name essentially they are performing addition operation but they all have different argument list so let us discuss what is function overloading and how to implement function overloading in C++. Function overloading allows to use multiple functions sharing the same name. Here you can get idea from word overloading. We will be having more than one function but they will use same name. So here overloading is on function name. Function overloading is the practice of declaring the same function with different signatures or you can say argument list suppose you are having two functions and having same number of arguments and same data type in same order then we can say the both function is having same signature but in function overloading we are going to write different signatures if function is saying same name Function overloading is also known as function polymorphism. Polymorphism means more than one form. So in our previous example, function sum had three different forms. First was adding two numbers, second was adding three and so forth. So from this discussion, we can say that function overloading is just providing different signatures to the functions which are sharing same name so let us discuss how to provide different signatures or different argument list so first way is that you can provide different number of arguments so in our previous example all three sum function had different number of argument in which first had two arguments second had three and third had four arguments another method is you can provide different data type of arguments so in this way also you can provide different signature and third method is order of appearance of arguments so arguments here are making function unique if they are using same name but most important thing is that function overloading does not depends on its written type okay so if you are having function sum having written type integer and another function sum having written type float and both are using same signature then it will not allowed in c++ so let us discuss this further with example code here i am making function sum having two arguments it is returning us a plus B we are calling this function by passing arguments now I want to create function sum like this So here this both function are having same name and having same signature this is not allowed in C++ because when you call this compiler will get confused which function definition to call here it may be possible we write different function body here so to differentiate this signature we are providing third argument So 
this is called function all loading we are using same name but we are differentiating this function using function signature or you can say argument list so we have used here number of arguments to differentiate two functions now let us create third function again we have created function sum but data type of these arguments are different so in this way we have created function overloading here we have used the data type of arguments should be different to make your function unique third method is to use order of argument suppose if i change order of argument here integer appeared first and then double we have changed here the order of appearance this will return a plus b let us call all these functions one by one in second function we had three arguments so we are providing three values in third function first argument is integer second argument is double in fourth function first argument is of type double and second is of type integer so let us save and execute this program So 1 plus 2 that will be 3, 1 plus 2 plus 3 that will be 6, 1 plus 1.2 it should be 2.2 but here we are having written type integer so this will perform type conversion over here and it will return us 2. It will again here perform 1.2 plus 1 it will be 2.2 but we are returning integer so it will be display as 2 only so this is the function overloading concept now let us discuss some of the valid and invalid function declarations i am declaring function sum with arguments integer a integer b this will be valid here i am writing function sum having two arguments integer integer but it is returning float over here but we will focus only function signature here signature is same so this declaration will be invalid again we are having same signature just we have changed the variable name so change of variable name or change of written type will not affect in function overloading signature should be different in three ways either number of arguments data type of arguments or order of appearance so this will be invalid over here we have used integer and float so here signature is different this will be valid float and integer order of appearance of these data types are different so it will generate some different signature this is valid we are using float and float it will be valid we have used different number of arguments this is again valid and different data type this is again valid so this is all about function overloading you can practice program to calculate area of circle triangle and box by your own here is the solution we are calling function area 5 so it is responsibility of compiler to decide which function to call among these three available areas so here it will call one argument and it will return us some float result because the return type is over here is float here second function area called and it will display area of triangle and here is the area of box it will return l into w into h now let us discuss default function arguments 
suppose we are having billing software in that we provide price of product that is thousand and giving discount 20% and press save it will calculate 20% discount for given price but if we don't provide any discount and press save by default it will give 5% discount so this is called default value now here we are going to discuss default function arguments that is similar to variable initialization if you initialize variable in main and you are supposed to write integer then variable name and you assign some value so in function argument you can provide default values like this so there are four possible ways to call this function here i am calling cube volume but not passing any argument so if argument is not specified then compiler look at the definition definition will be same like this right it will check how many number of arguments are there in function declaration and alert program to provide default values for that now we can call the same function by passing argument 9 so it will again check the def declaration of that function and alert program to provide remaining values so there are four possible ways to call this function let us discuss this in detail we are having function volume default values are 5 6 and 7 for 3 arguments and performing multiplication of these 3 first of all I am calling function volume here no arguments are specified so for L it will consider 5 for W it will consider 6 for H it will consider 7 and perform the multiplication respectively now I am calling same function but providing one argument so by default it will consider these as first argument so 9 will be overwritten over here so for L it will consider value 9 and remaining two arguments are not given so by default it will use 6 and 7 for W and H so in this function call for L value is 9 W that is 6 and for H that is 7 now in third function call 15 and 2 so now it is easy for L it will consider 15 for W it will consider 2 here third argument is not given so by default it will use 7 as value of H in third function call all three arguments are given so 3 will be overwritten here, 4 will be overwritten here and 7 will be overwritten here. So for L it will consider 3, for W it will consider 4 and for H it will consider 7. So this is how default argument work. Now let us discuss some of the facts about default arguments. While invoking a function, if arguments are not given, then default values will be used as we have seen in previous program if we call q volume and don't provide any argument it will consider 2 2 and 2 for l w and h as default arguments we must add default arguments from right to left if you want to assign default arguments to variables then their order should be right to left so here rightmost argument is not provided having no value so this will be invalid for compiler we cannot provide default value to a particular argument in the middle of the argument list so if you write argument like this then again it will be confusion state for compiler now let us check some of the valid and invalid arguments first declaration is valid because we have provided default argument from right to left second is again valid but here in third declaration it will be invalid because its order should be right to left so if you want to make this statement correct you cannot provide default argument to a this will be also invalid because order should be right to left only
and this will be valid because you have provided default argument to all three variables so let us discuss common mistakes here in declaration you forget or you have not provided default values to a and c so you cannot miss a default argument in between two arguments in this case c should be assigned a default value to make this statement correct we have provided only default value to b variable so if you want to give some default argument to single variable then make sure that argument is the last argument because it will consider from right to left only so this is all about default arguments thank you